Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Red Raptor Writes. Back in 2008, when I was a 9 year old, I already had a long fascination with dinosaurs. But from seemingly out of nowhere, this new show started to air on the History Channel, Jurassic Fight Club. If you haven't seen it, Jurassic Fight Club was a show back in the day where episodes consisted of dinosaur fighting scenarios very loosely based on fossil evidence. It was hosted primarily by dinosaur George Blazing, but also a cool narrator and some well-known paleontologists. Each episode consisted of the speakers examining each combatant, followed by the full fight sequence. My undeveloped mind loved the stuff. It was chock full of epic dinosaur action and lots of new information. At that time, I already recognized most of the combatants, so I got to see more of my favorite creatures. Man, I remember coming home from long days of tedious back-to-school shopping just to finally sit my butt on the couch and watch the latest release. Jurassic Fight Club was awesome... for a child. After years of development and learning real science, I've come to realize just how terrible this documentary really is. Now, I could do a straightforward play-by-play -play highlighting all of the many problems, but I won't because this is a 12 hour long series and there's no way in heck anybody has time for that. If you want something that highlights every inaccuracy, then I suggest checking out PaleoNerd and Scanova the Carnotaurus. They both have very great and very lengthy material on the subject. Links in the description. Instead, this video will be divided into three main segments depicting how the show insults our intelligence. Firstly, the terrible designs. Second, the treatment of the show's animals. And finally, all the straight up lies JFC tells its audience with no regard to any kind of evidence. That's right, the History Channel literally lies to its audience countless times. For these reasons, Jurassic Fight Club is easily the most insulting dinosaur documentary I've ever seen. Before we get started, quick side note, there are two episodes that don't feature dinosaurs, but let's be real here, dinosaurs are the main stars, so that's my focus. Anyways, let's dig this up. The strange thing about dinosaur documentaries is that no single one is ever entirely accurate. Some aim for realism more than others. But I guarantee you, there is always something that is outdated, disputed, or purely speculative. It's unavoidable when making these because we don't have actual Camarasaurus walking around a film. And as new discoveries come in, old trains of thought fall behind. Even what is perhaps the most beloved dino doc ever, Walking with Dinosaurs, has plenty of problems, but many of their designs were due to outdated information. Plus, the commitment to creating a nature film experience gave it a very appreciated feeling that these were animals living their lives, not monsters. Jurassic Fight Club's dinosaurs don't get the same goodwill, at least not from me. To start off, it's very clear that the History Channel falls for many false dinosaur cliches. If you've seen my recent Jurassic World video, you would have some knowledge of what I'm talking about, but I'll certainly reiterate them for my new viewers here. For one, all the carnivores have their wrists pronated, meaning they're facing downwards like they're playing the congas. Realistically, this was impossible for them to do without breaking their own wrists. It's as if theropods regularly commit self-harm and mutilation. Should I go and perform mutilations? Aside from maybe hadrosaurs, most dinosaurs really had their hands in an inward position as if they were clapping. Hopefully this design becomes more mainstream because still all too often, my poor virgin eyes are forced to endure this ridiculous looking broken wrist position. Next up are the faces. It's very common in dinosaur media to show indents in their skulls. This is a reference to the presence of what are called fenestrae. These are the holes in the skull which serve as attachment sites for jaw muscles and they make the skull lighter. The fenestrae would have been covered by skin and flesh, so it's extremely unlikely that they would have been visible on dinosaur faces unless the poor animals were starving to death. There are a few occasions in the show where animals are starving to death, but this usually isn't the case and the holes are visible anyways. Many of the creatures we see are grossly missized over and over. Pack hunting is always inferred among carnivores when there's little to no evidence of this for the vast majority of them. 
And a final recurring point is the lack of feathers. It's already been well established in the fossil record that many dinosaurs had some variation of fluff. Certainly not every dino and not every carnivore, but there are a number of animals featured that should have plumage. Dromaeosaurids, or raptors, are the poster children for feathered dinos, and for good reason, being one of the most similar theropods to the avian dinosaurs, and having several examples of direct fossil evidence. However, the Deinonychus in the show is 100% scaly. Later episodes in the series do give other raptor genus some coverings, but not nearly enough. The Utah Raptor has some head quills, and the Dromaeosaurus has some on its head, arms, and tail. They're both way scalier than they should be though. Albertosaurus and the Baby Rexes too can also get some love. Okay, so those are just generic, general design problems. These aren't what sink the show. What accomplishes that task is how the show ignores its own information in order to give more mainstream interpretations. No, I'm serious. Experts come on and give little information bits about each dinosaur, but the visual designs ignore the experts on their own show for the sake of looking less accurate and more cool. There are many examples of Fight Club doing this. This happens to Majungasaurus twice, which they irresponsibly call Majungatholus, the name of a Madagascarian Pachycephalosaur that they figured out was actually just Majungasaurus. Hey dude, you missed a spot? I got it. Just a little- Majungatholus. Actually, dude, it's- Majungasaurus. That's what I said! Majungatholus. Uh, dude, that would be- Majungasaurus. First, they contradict themselves with the arms. Majungatholus's arm is incredibly short. It's got an upper arm bone, but its forearm has shrunken, so it's basically a wrist. You just watched a narrator specifically call the forearm of Majungasaurus a wrist, which is accurate. This predator, along with other abelisaurs, had puny, flimsy arms without much function. But at the same time, the episode shows these well-developed, defined arms, more similar to a tyrannosaur than an abelisaur. The same thing happens with the legs, too. Unlike the South American Carnotaurus, you can see how Majungasaurus has pretty short legs. This guy was basically the killer sausage of Madagascar. The legs are mentioned here. Its second drawback was its legs, which were relatively short compared to its overall body size. But we're shown this. Look at these massive ostrich legs. This doesn't only happen for Majungasaurus, but look at this sad excuse of a Pachyrhinosaurus. The first thing you notice is this big lumpy mass on the end of its nose. We call that a boss. It has one really cool defining feature, having a nose bump called a boss instead of a horn. The creators openly acknowledged that there shouldn't be any horn, but were like, eh, screw it, horns look dope, and stuck one on there. Commentators openly say about Ceratosaurus that its horns were used for display, and often make small comparisons to colorful birds in the show that use display ornaments. But they show small, dark, sharp horns on their head instead. Prehistoric Kingdom, for instance, has done a much better job at this by showing them as these large, colorful ornaments. I can keep going on and on about how poorly these dinosaurs were designed. The visual artists really did not care about the facts, even the ones they say on their own show. Jurassic Fight Club just went with whatever looked coolest to them. It sucks, guys. One of the many issues that sets Jurassic Fight Club apart from other dinosaur shows is how little it respects its subjects. The focus of the series is to provide awesome looking fights between popular dinosaurs. The facts, and even the dinosaurs themselves, are secondary. What results are wonderful animals portrayed as bloodthirsty monsters who love fighting to the death. Yes, these are animals who don't have the same problem solving capacity as humans, but they make such piss poor decisions that no sane creature would make. These guys disregard all logic just so we can get more dino action. In JFC, we don't get fascinating subjects for a documentary, but these totally awesome bro rock'em sock'em robots. It decides to pit its speed and agility against the strength of a mad Tyrannosaurus Rex. Like in the small clip I showed, the Nano Tyrannus is confronted by a raging mama T-Rex twice its size that's protecting its baby. Guys, an angry Tyrannosaurus! That's the most dangerous thing to walk the earth. 
Instead of booking the heck out of there like anything with a brain, the nano dives straight for the child. The result is obvious. She spins and turns, avoiding his flanking move. She grabs the nano tyrannus in her mouth and using the bite force of a thousand pounds per square inch. But killing the nano isn't enough for the mother to... Yes, what was considered to be Nano Tyrannus is an invalid genus and actually a subadult Tyrannosaurus, but hey, it's just one of the many, many failures of this documentary. I thought we were having young T Rex. No, no, I said Nano Tyrannus. That's what I call T Rex. You call young T Rex. Nano Tyrannus. Yes, it's a regional dialect. Ah, uh, uh, what region? Uh, now these Nano Tyrannus are quite similar to the Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> oh no! Yes, and you call them Nano Tyrannus, despite the fact they are obvious to T Rex. You know, the need more proof that these are just Dinosaur George's action figures? Look at this scene from the Bloodiest Battle episode. So the sounds of the Camerasaurus makes it much more interesting of a target. So they move off and decide that's the thing they're going to attack. There's a dead baby Stegosaurus and a mom whose front is entirely stuck in the mud. Not to mention the dead Ceratosaurus laying on the ground. This group of Allosaurus have enough food for days, maybe weeks. But because the episode needs more fighting, the Allos ignore the entire Golden Corral buffet and choose to battle a bull Camarasaurus. This show is so stupid. I'll touch on this later, but the commenters go on and on about how smart and advanced Allosaurus is, only to give it the decision making of a drunk driver. So yes, the creators did not care about accuracy, or realism, or the fact that these were not action movie stars, but the one thing that gets me the most upset is Fight Club's treatment of one of my favorite dinosaurs, the Ceratosaurus. Its skeletal design is sort of weak. So it's not really built for a full combat. In fact, the size of its brain cavity shows this dinosaur wasn't the most intelligent in the prehistoric world. So although it was pretty strong, it didn't have the claws, it didn't have the brains, and it also didn't have the size of some of the other giant meat eaters of its environment. All the narrator and guests do whenever this amazing Jurassic Predator is on screen is mock the heck out of it. I have never, ever seen any documentary, or show for that matter, have such a disdain for its subject matter. I can't imagine what it did to deserve such hate. It's like this carnivore went cloaca to cloaca with the producer's wife or something. Over and over and over again, the show literally shames its inaccurate depiction of Ceratosaurus. And if all the insults weren't enough, in both episodes it's featured in, the Cerrado's only purpose is to be the personal punching bag of the larger Allosaurus. It wasn't enough for Dinosaur George and friends to appreciate Allosaurus, it's a cool dinosaur. But they decided that in order to prop up their favorite predator, they had to humiliate Ceratosaurus. Even as only a 9 year old watching the show, the episode Hunter Becomes Hunted always unsettled me because it's literally 45 minutes of the experts insulting the poor thing while Allosaurus brutalizes two of them, making Ceratosaurus tonight's big loser. As a lover of all that is dinosaurs, I don't want to watch them be treated so badly. This should go for any docu-series really. Us audiences sit down to watch because we love and appreciate the subject matter, not to watch it get ragged on. Imagine Cosmos but Neil deGrasse Tyson spends an entire episode on how much he hates Beetlejuice. Dang, I thought CNN was bad. The History Channel may hold the title for the champion of fake news. Like I said before, Many paleontological documentaries contain lots of speculation and outdated information. Our knowledge of prehistoric animals is always progressing, so it's okay for a 20 year old docuseries to fall behind. Jurassic Fight Club itself had a lot of speculation and disputed information like the Nano Tyrannus and lots of pack hunting. Although not aged super well, these aren't the main problems. No, no, it's all the random dinosaur crap they think up on the fly and present as real information. 
Just like Don Lemon, they're willing to make up these false narratives for the sake of a more entertaining story. Let's bring it back to the whole Ceratosaurus nonsense. Multiple times, the narrator states that Ceratosaurus ruled the Jurassic for 20 million years until the Allosaurus came along and outcompeted it to near extinction. More advanced in both brain and brawn than its competition, it literally ate them into extinction. It makes for a tragic story, but there is zero evidence to support this. In fact, the evidence says the opposite. The Allosaurus actually came first, but they both lived and died around the same time at the end of the Jurassic. And Ceratosaurus wasn't that dumb. Its intelligence didn't pale in comparison to Allosaurus. It was of average intelligence for its time, on par with the other predators in its environment. It wasn't outdated, primitive, or dumb. And Allosaurus wasn't the Stephen Hawking of the Jurassic. And one of the speakers actually comes out and admits that they probably served different niches, so they didn't have to compete for food. Ceratosaurus most likely hunted smaller dinosaurs and even some aquatic prey, while Allosaurus hunted the larger sauropods and stegosaurs of the Morse information. They admit this, but then instantly say screw it. It's like the guest paleontologists don't want to lose all credibility and save face, but then the show quickly contradicts any correct claims made. Another completely baseless claim made is that somehow the raptor namesake Dromaeosaurus used hand signals to coordinate fight strategies. I... I don't even know how to respond to this one, it's just that outrageous. How were they even supposed to see each other's hands through their wings- oh, oh wait. Another gem gifted to us was the toxic T-Rex bite. Jurassic Fight Club claims in the episode T-Rex Hunter that because the tyrant had serrated teeth and Komodo dragons have serrated teeth, the former's teeth would have held rotten flesh housing extra bacteria that slowly kills anything it bites. The host tried to use this to raise the intensity of the fight, but it's pure garbage. Two things. One, Tyrannosaurus was far from the only predator with serrations on its teeth. Many times in the series, they point out the serrations on other dinosaur teeth, like Deinonychus. Most theropods have them. Raptors, Ceratosaurs, Allosaurs, Megalosaurs, and all Tyrannosaurs. You can't say T-Rex is special for having something everyone else has. Second, Komodo dragons don't have special bacteria. We now know that they have venom glands in their mouths that pump anticoagulant into their bites. One final big lie I briefly touched on is how many times the show claims that its animals are bloodthirsty. So many times in battle, the narrator and dinosaur George claimed this, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Fueled by bloodlust, the Allosaurus unleashes his rage on the wounded rival. Deadly, swift menace with a singular goal. Kill. Its endless appetite drove it to savage butchery. I have no clue how any dinosaur experts can get behind this. Um, no. Dinosaurs did not put their lives on the line in order to have epic fights to the death. They were not the killer monsters this show likes to claim they were. If there was conflict, they'd more likely try to intimidate each other. Raptor vs Rex got one thing right at least. If a hunt did take a turn for the worst, these animals wouldn't have kamikaze to maintain their honor. That's ridiculous. Running away was always an option. But anyways, this is another false narrative that the History Channel keeps trying to push. Dinosaurs were not bloodthirsty, vicious creatures that routinely fought to the death in order to satisfy some endless hunger. As I hope you've realized by now, the 2008 show Jurassic Fight Club is a really, really bad docu-series for plenty of reasons. I have never seen any documentary go to such lengths to be so terrible. Seriously, who wants to watch a series where the speakers hate their subject matter? Who wants to watch something that doesn't even take its own host seriously? Or one that makes up complete lies? A nine-year-old who doesn't know any better, sure, but as adults who at least had an elementary school graduation, we need to demand more of shows like JFC that pretend to be educational. There are many people who don't know any better who watch these battles and expect accuracy. They think they're learning so much, but sadly aren't. I would love for more people to take interest in dinosaurs and learn more about them, but lying to general audiences isn't the way. 
I was redeemed, and hopefully others are too. Guys, our intelligence shouldn't be insulted like we're Dinosaur George's least favorite dinosaur. Let's get more documentaries that, you know, actually try. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like, subscribe, and check out my social media. See you next time.